Ever since March of 2020, the Animal Crossing gods have done nothing but test me, and I'm tired. I just want this stupid female dog. And you know what? I've had it officially. I am very lucky today because as you can see, Bruce has decided to leave my island. So that means I can go on a villager hunt. And you know what I'm gonna be doing today? I'm gonna give myself a hundred tickets. A hundred more tries for this stupid game to give me the villager I want. And if it doesn't happen, I am going against God's wishes and I'm gonna sacrifice my entire island. I am going to reset this damn island. If Pietro doesn't show up today, I'm not joking. Well, if it ain't this, you know I'm moving away tomorrow, right? I gotta say, there was never a dull moment with you around. Thanks for that, kiddo. I am gonna miss you, Bruce, but honestly, I also salute you. You are just a pawn in this game. You are the sacrifice. You're the lamb or the deer that I'm sacrificing to get Pietro. If he doesn't show up today, this entire island as we know it is gone. I don't care. The plot, empty. Tickets, there's a hundred of them. Count them. What the hell is she doing? She is getting ready to be sacrificed so that I can get Pietro. Wendy, thank you for your service. Do we think Pietro's gonna be on island number one? Oh. No. Well, it was worth a shot. Ooh, but there's a bottle. Who do we think this bottle's from? Biff. Cute. Miss Marcy, I never realized that she has lipstick on. Why are they so luscious? Okay, baddie, I see you. It's our evil secretary queen, Miss Dottie. Hello. I have never seen Dottie in the game, I don't think. Damn, did you see the red eyes? You saw the red eyes, right? She is evil. She reminds me of like that bandit character from Mario. It's the eyes, that's what she looks like. Oh my God, I've never realized how cute is Dottie. Why doesn't Dottie get more hype in the community? I feel like she does. Maybe I'm just not listening. Island number three, only 97 to go. Hi, Cobb. Honestly, for all of us spooky bitches that are doing a Halloween island, consider getting Cobb because he really is an evil scientist, like literally. He really would work for like a Halloween island or just like a spooky core island in general. I think Cobb's cool. He's just like the Dr. Doofenshmirtz of the Animal Crossing community. It's so hard coming up with original thoughts for villagers now that I've done my ranking video because I feel like I'm just repeating myself from shit that I've said on that video. What's the point of villager hunting in general now? It's like, I can't talk shit about these villagers because I've already done it. Oh my God, Rolf. Cute, but you're not Pietro, so I don't care. Do we, like, do we think it's happening though? I know y'all can just like skip to the end of the video. Don't do that. Comment down below the opposite of what actually happens. Like if I find Pietro, comment down below being like, oh my God, I can't believe he reset his island. But if I don't find Pietro, be like, oh my God, I can't believe he finally found Pietro. You know, just to like gaslight everybody and just like make them think one thing and then get surprised. Cause it's always fun to do that, honestly. Gaslighting is so fun. I mean like unpopular opinion. But like, gaslighting people is low key fun. Obviously there are certain situations where you shouldn't do it. Am I allowed to say this? Like, is this a hot take? Manipulating people is fun sometimes, not always, but like sometimes. Like Jacob, Jacob over here looks like someone you can manipulate and like just have constant fun doing it. I'm saying that like I'm not easily manipulated. Like I'm so gullible myself. I think that's the thing is that I'm constantly being gaslit and gate kept from everything. So I think it's just fun to like return the favor to you know to all the bitches that do it to me. I just do it right back and somehow they never suspect it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Okay like here's the tea. I wasn't planning on filming this video today. I was like in the middle of recording another video and I got bored of recording that video. So I was like it's not a normal day for me to record. Like it's Wednesday. I'm on my phone. I'm such a good YouTuber. Yeah, I don't usually record on Wednesdays because like I usually edit on Wednesdays, but here I am recording this and this is definitely not going out on Thursday. Let's say that much. You know, I think it's because I posted a video on Tuesday. So like my entire schedule is just so off right now. <laughs> like I was planning on posting a different video on Saturday, but I think now this is probably going to go up on Saturday. We'll see. So like this is all very last minute. And like, I guess because, you know, the intro must have been so shocking. I should probably let everybody know that like I most likely was going to reset Willow anyways. We probably saw this coming. Let's be honest. Like what the fuck am I going to do on Willow now? Now that it's done, I don't feel like flattening it, although it probably would be easy to because there's no terraforming. I can just get rid of all the items. And then like we'd go back to square one. That's true. Oh my God, I haven't thought about that. But yeah, like I was probably going to reset anyways because resetting's fun. But you know who's not fun? Twiggy. Like fuck off. I don't really play New Leaf anymore, but like when I did, when I got to like this point, 
of its like existence, I was constantly resetting. I love resetting. Like, let's just get that out of the way. I think the most fun you can have in Animal Crossing is like the early stages and like planning out your island, you know? Cause let's be honest, New Horizons is an island decorator simulator. Sure, I, I can just flatten my island and restart from it. Why do that when it's like the beginning of the game, you have your first two villagers, you have to build your campsite and then there's the hype from the campsite villager. There's the hype of like trying to figure out which airport color you want and like getting a completely different map. Right now I have like a Western facing river thingy, but like what if I want a double south river? I've had a double south river before and honestly, they're kind of fun. If you're in the mood for a challenge, get a double south river island because those are low key fun. Eld New was one of them and that's still one of my favorite islands to this day. So I don't, what the fuck do you want? Why are you back? Are you back so I can manipulate you some more? Like fuck off, Jakey. Nobody likes you. Comment down below if you like Jakey. Bottle, three, two, one. Gabby. Our lesbian farmer. I don't know, because I really enjoyed this island. Like, no terraforming, no codes. Like, that was fun. And, like, honestly, thinking about it, I fucking hate terraforming. Terraforming is, like, so annoying. And it's like, yeah, it was still one of the best features to be introduced in New Horizons. The fact that you can literally just reshape your entire island. The other thing that I always think about is like sometimes in life, it's just more fun when there's a challenge. When you're given too much control, Things can get boring so quick. And I feel like that's why for a lot of people, New Horizons got so boring so fast. You were basically able to do however, like whatever you wanted on your island. If you didn't like where the water was going, you can just change the direction of it. If you didn't like how there were cliffs in the back, you can just add some more cliffs to the front of the island and get rid of the ones in the back. I know like there's this whole modding trend going around and like there's nothing against modding. I think modding's dope. I wouldn't personally do it because I don't want to mod my Switch. My Switch is patched and I do not feel like getting a another one. Speaking of fucking gaslighting, here is a villager who would definitely gaslight you. Fuck you. Are you kidding me? Why are you here? I banished you from Windle for a fucking reason. Go away. I don't want to look at you right now. Look at him looking down at me. He is looking down. At, look down at me. He's pretending like I don't exist, even though I'm right here. Like, what the fuck do you want? Oh, now you're ignoring me. You're ignoring me. Don't act like I was the fucking problem. You were the menace, not me. Don't you dare try it, Ken. Ugh, the nerve, the nerve of that man. There is only one Ken that we stand, and that is Ken from Barbie. Ooh, there's another bottle. Who is it? Louie. Cute. Giving me something I already know. Wow. <laughs> This is still technically a brand new island. I don't have a lot of recipes and I'm already getting duplicates. Oh my God, like speaking of Ken from Barbie, anybody else back in their Barbie life in the dream house era? Because that's something that I have been nonstop watching recently. That show is just perfection. Honestly, that is such an underrated cartoon. I wish it got more episodes and I hate that it was a web series. It deserved to be on TV. It's on Netflix now. So like technically you can watch it on TV, but like it should have been a TV show from the get. I feel like if it was a TV show, cause this show came out in 2011 and I feel I feel like in 2011, web shows were like in a weird space, you know? I feel like, especially for like corporate companies to do web shows, like nobody really cared about them back then. Nobody really cares about them now though, when you really think about it. And like, sure, Barbie Life in the Dream House was still a really successful show, but I feel like it would have been even more successful if it was on TV. Like imagine coming home and like tuning into YTV and just watching Barbie Life in the Dream House. Like it's so genius and it's like so low key about it. And that's what makes it even more smarter. Raquel is an icon, by the way. Raquel is easily one of the best TV show villains in all of TV show history. It's not even a joke. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's my girl, Brofina, my queen. I wish I could take you, but I can't because I'm hunting for our other friend, Pietro. God damn it. I'm going to run into everybody today, huh? Every single person that I've had history with, they're going to be showing up today. I'm not even through the first stack yet. Oh, wow. I really need to start rushing through these islands. That's the thing. I always complain about how long it takes for me to villager hunt. Y'all have seen the way I villager hunt, right? Like I go, I see the villager. I give a monologue about them because for some reason I have personal history with all 400 villagers, even the ones I've never had. When it's like, I gotta do this like chase crossing Koromora style, you know, like just see who the villager is, run back and like give my speech about them while I'm in the airport. That is honestly smarter. I don't know if I can do that, but I'm gonna try to do that. Barbie Life in the Dream House. If you don't have Netflix, it is on YouTube. Actually, there's more episodes of it on YouTube anyways. So like, it would make more sense to watch it on there. Even if you don't like Barbie, you should watch this show. An unpopular opinion, I love Barbie. <laughs> is that an unpopular opinion? I loved Barbie ever since I was a kid. Like I was a little boy who was obsessed with Barbie. My obsession with Barbie as a kid was when like my sister knew 
For sure. My sister knew. Who is that? Is that Gabby or Mira? Shout out to Mira. No, I said we're running back. I said we are running back. As soon as I see who the villager is, we leave to the airport. We don't stay on the island. There's no need to stay on this island. Ow. Oh God, everything is going downhill very quick. My obsession with Barbie as a kid, if I was a girl, it would be normal. But because I was a guy, apparently it wasn't normal for me to be obsessed with Barbie. Every day I came home from school, I would log on to Barbie.com and play every single Barbie game. I wanted a Barbie doll growing up. Like, actually, I wanted one growing up. Of course, my parents never got me one. I think that's the reason why they never got my sister one either, because they knew that I would play with it. Growing up with homophobic parents, like, ugh. What a life, you know? <laughs> but it is funny though, because like, I think I'm grateful to have a sister because like, if I didn't have one, oh my God, I don't even know how I would have been now. The only reason why I'm such a femboy is because of that bitch. So shout out to her. I didn't have to say it like that. And yet I did anyways. Sometimes life is more fun when you don't think before you speak. Bitty, fuck you. Like that. I didn't, I, I didn't have to cuss her off, but I did anyways, because it's fun. If there's one thing you take from this video, just be a menace, be a disaster to society. Don't conform. What's the opposite of conform? Whatever that word is, do that. How long do you think this video is gonna be? I have no idea. It's only been 25 minutes since I started recording. So like that's probably gonna be around like the eight to 10 minute mark, judging by the way I edit, we'll see. Okay, speaking of Halloween, it's like Cobb was so long ago, but I wanna go back to Halloween cause it is October. I started watching horror movies this month, like a bunch of horror movies. Okay, hi Patty. I started watching horror movies because I'm trying to get into horror movies and like slashers, especially slashers, because I love slashers. I just think movies are more fun when death is involved. I've only seen two so far. I watched Scream for the first time ever. Shout out to Mike's Mike. Mike's Mike's video. I love that I watched that video that gave like a full plot summary exposing everything. And then I was like, yeah, let's go watch the movie even though I, even though I know how it ends. <laughs> like I know who the killer is. It was still fun to watch anyways. Cause I think like whodunit slasher style movies are also more fun to watch when like you've already seen it or like when you know who the killer is. Because it's always interesting to go back and see like if there were any clues to who the killer was. Like, I think Scream, watching it, knowing who the killer was, I'm not gonna spoil it just in case you wanna see it. It was interesting because it's like, you know, sometimes the killer would appear and then like two seconds later, the person who it was would also be in the room or like something like that, you know? So it was like really interesting to like think like how it could have been, oh my God. Oh my God. First I see Ken and now I see the other fucking chicken who loves to do nothing but try it. No, of course. We're talking about gaslighting in this video. All the gaslighters got to show up today, huh? Scream was more fun knowing who the killer was and watching it. I haven't seen any of the Scream movies, which I feel like I look like someone who would like horror. So I don't know why I haven't started watching them, but now I have. I've seen the first Scream. I plan on watching the second one soon. I don't know if I should watch the fourth one. I've seen mixed reviews about it. I've seen some people say they liked it. Some people say they hated it so it's like eh. but the other horror movie that i watched recently was bodies 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 um i don't know why it was just on a whim i literally bought the movie like i bought the movie on prime and watched it it was good I'm not gonna sit here and say it was a bad movie. It definitely wasn't better than Scream. I don't regret spending the money. It was actually a really fun take on the whole whodunit slasher style movie. And it was especially fun because it was like so Gen Z, but like Gen, oh, Walker. Remember when I had Walker? Oh, I have Lucky on this island. How fun would it have been to take Walker and have him and Lucky on the same island? Oh, well, can't do that anymore because I'm leaving. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was like a fun Gen Z slasher thriller movie. I'm not gonna spoil much about it, but I will say like, if you've been thinking about watching it, go in with like low expectations, but like you, you're gonna enjoy it. Cause like, honest to God, it was so funny. Rachel Zenit's in it, the girl from, I think Shiva Baby, that's what it is. She was so, so funny. Honestly, she was the best character in the movie. I think like if you're on TikTok, if you're on horror TikTok, you've probably seen enough fan cams of her. Like that's the reason why I watched it once again. It was cause of TikTok. These girlies on TikTok that make edits of movies, they need to get paid. They need to be in charge of trailers. Cause honestly, a TikTok edit is more impactful than a movie trailer nowadays. Like one good TikTok edit is good enough. Do you know how many things I've started watching because of TikTok edits? Like I talked about Do Revenge, that was one for sure. Now there's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. 
Oh my God, he's still on his journey before he comes home. Oh, like I said, I have his amiibo. It's right here. Don't ask why. I will probably bring him back at some point. Don't worry, he won't be gone forever. He needs time on his self-discovery journey before he returns and calls a place home. We're gonna leave him there. But yes, bodies, bodies, bodies review. Go into it with low expectations and go in if you wanna laugh. I'm not, like, I'm not gonna spoil it, like I said, but like, it's clever in the reveal. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, and then when you sit back and really think about the movie, like, it's clever. It's just really clever in, like, showcasing why everybody did what they did. Once you find out who the... <laughs> Speaking of killer... <laughs> is that actually him? <laughs> Is this real? Is this real? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm actually crying. I'm actually fucking crying. No fucking way. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Bitch, let me take a fucking photo. Me and Pietro. Like, I found him. I fucking found him. Oh yes, daddy! I, I hate that I found him on this island, though. I'm not even, like, are you Mm. We are not going to, the gaslighting continues, man. He comes on the island that I was planning on resetting. I didn't think I was going to find him. Oh my God. He's flirting with me too. He says he likes my name. He's flirting with me. He's trying to get in my pants. Oh my God. Meeting you here. This feels pretty much the way I always thought destiny would feel. Honk, honk. Like, are you kidding me? Why is this clown flirting with me? This fucking man. <laughs> He's judging my outfit. Why is he staring at me like this? I finally find him and the first thing he does is judge me like look he's literally staring at my shoes he's like why are you wearing those fucking shoes you've been looking for me for two years and this is the outfit you find me in fuck you pietro come to my fucking island right now <laughs> It had to happen like this. I want to complain because it's like, I was planning on resetting this island. I don't want to keep Willow. I wanted to start a new island. And now you're telling me I have to keep it? Shut the fuck up with your loud ass engine. Oh my God, I'm trying to have a moment here. You know what though? At the end of the day, this video teaches you a lesson. If God is challenging you in any way, just fight back. I was willing to sacrifice my entire island and whatever fucking deity is in charge. Is that how you say the word deity? Whoever was in charge of this, they heard me and they finally gave me what I fucking deserve. This is what I've been waiting for for two years. Two years after two years, I finally found all five of them. Two of them are right here. And then the other two are on my other island. I have them across two. <laughs> Every single bitch. Sorry, I shouldn't call y'all bitches. Every single person who's been doubting me, who's been waiting for this, who's been like just every time you tuned into a villager hunt hoping that I would find him. Like it actually happened. It actually happened. How do y'all feel though? Like, like, is this something worth celebrating? Is it, is it finally time? Oh my God, Julian is here on our lock screen to greet us on this glorious day on October 14th in game, not in real life. It's October 12th in real life. This should be a holiday. This should honestly be a holiday. October 12th, mark this day. Every year on October 12th, we celebrate the day I finally found Pietro. He's not even my number one dreamy. If we're gonna go by that, then September 2nd is what we should be celebrating because that's when I found Wolfgang. Oh my God. Oh my God. I am making a fucking scrapbook about this. I've been taking so many photos so I can actually do this. <laughs> no. Oh my God. No, Wendy. No. Why'd you have to come now? You know, this is an important day for me. This stupid girl trying to make everything about her. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, her. Yo, this thanks again for inviting me here. Yep. Thanks to you. I made my Willow debut today. That is not the voice I'm giving him. I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. I think I'm going to be a big star here, but first I got some unpacking to do. So I'll see you around Hong Kong. He's finally here. Look, this is real life. This is real life. This isn't a fantasy. This is real life. It's happened. It's happened. He's here. Uh, I just want to sit here and take as many photos of him as I can. Oh, Am I allowed to do this? Like, oh, I'm happy. I am content. I finally found all my fucking dreamies in this game. So it's like, what now? Does this mean this is the last villager hunt I ever do? I didn't think about that. Oh my God. Oh my God. 